I'm Trish Lopez, and this is The Luke Capetta Show. Yo, what's going on? This is the Luke Capetta Show, Season 2. I'm your host, Luke Capetta. And today, I say this, I feel like I say this every week, but I have a very special guest. Now, I love those 60-second documentaries, and this is how I discovered this person. I reached out to her, and she was gracious enough to come on. She is running a, uh, an incredible program all the way out in New Mexico called Teen Years. Trish Lopez, thank you. Thank you so much. I'm so glad you reached out. I'm happy to be on <laughs> Uh, after, after it took us forever to get this thing working, but I appreciate you, uh, bearing with me and stuff. Cause, uh, I could definitely use, uh, well, I have teenage kids, so I actually, I, I have built in teen years. Yeah, exactly. That's it. Built in teen years. And they, uh, I feel like they mess with the technology sometimes on purpose <laughs> so that like, I can't figure it out. But, um, so teen years, First of all, before we get into anything, why don't you explain to everybody what Teen Years is? And then I found it fascinating. Like that, that little documentary was, I, I think it's amazing. So tell everybody what Teen Years is, and then we'll get into how uh, it developed over time and everything else. Okay. Um, teen Years are tech savvy teens and young adults who help senior citizens learn technology through one on one personalized coaching. So whether that's a cell phone, a tablet, a computer, mm-hmm. Our goal is to empower older adults to connect with their loved ones, engage with their communities and the world through technology while providing paid, meaningful jobs for teens and young adults. Okay, so that's a that's an important thing, because this is I remember when I was a teenager. Oh, so long ago that uh, it was it was like difficult to, to find a, a job, you know, like summer. You, you wanted to get a summer job and uh, yeah. it was difficult. And I know. Um, with my uh, older kids, it was, it was the same thing. It was really difficult for them to get a job. And, and this is, it's, this isn't just a job. It's, it seems like it's a fulfilling job. It's something that your uh, teen years, something that, that's fulfilling to them and they really, really enjoy doing and not just going to work at, you know, like the movie theater or something. Right. Do you find that, that your teen years are really into it? Yes, absolutely. What we find is not all seniors are cool with working the front counter at McDonald's or mm. working at all at McDonald's for that reason. Right. Or, as, <laughs> or working at all. <laughs> well, as you can imagine, <laughs> jobs that are offered to teenagers are, you know, it's manual labor, it's cleaning, or oh. it's fast food. And and there's there's few exceptions. And with teen years, not only is it a unique kind of job, but it's also unique because it doesn't speak to everyone. Um, a lot of shy, introverted, sometimes socially awkward kids apply to become teeners because mm. they know that they're brilliant and they know that they have the patience to tutor an older person learning technology, but they might not be given a chance in other sectors of their life. They, not, they may right. not be the life of the party in high school or anywhere else. And right. It's, I really take pride in the fact that these kids, a lot of them, I haven't seen any that haven't actually develop an amazing self-confidence and increased self-esteem through their work as a teen years coach. So yeah, we've had that, a shortage of stories of people saying, you know, telling us about the impact this has had on their life. That's amazing. Cause it, and all jokes aside, but sometimes it can be difficult to just get teenagers to, want to do anything and not not that they don't want to do anything sometimes as parents or you know the adults in their lives figuring out what it is that makes them want to go out and do something you know and that's uh absolutely absolutely that's that's impressive i find that that's really one of the that is the most one of the most impressive things that i really as i looked through your website and i saw the documentary that i took from that Mm, Yeah, I love that. Thank you. Um, Yeah. And I would also say that what I've noticed also makes a difference is, is the person who's in my role is naturally a mentor 
it's almost like whether you want to be or not. And I happen to like that role, but I hadn't, it was something I hadn't even realized until a teenager pointed it out to me. And her parents actually many, a few, several parents have now pointed that out to me. Like, I just want you to know that I'm so glad Kendra got you as her first boss because you have been the most amazing mentor to her. Like, I remember when that was first told to me, I was like, wow, I didn't even think of myself as a mentor. And that's the kind of important, like the influence that we can have on young people's lives or actually, I'd rather say it like this. So many of us as grownups have these huge influences on our right. lives, on any kids that are just in a situation with us regularly. And so the question is, are you going to be a good influence? Or are you going to be a contributor of good to their lives or are you not? You know what I mean? That's Yeah, no, I, absolutely. I mean, I, so I have, I have three adult children. They're 21. 19 and 18 and they uh I, I mean i i've seen them go through it and they've like when you it's it's important to have an outside adult as a, a, a influence on them because parents can only go so far you know there's only like it's only you know i'm all right with them right now but then like tomorrow i'll be a jerk or something or something yeah. something worse <laughs> and you and i didn't tell our parents everything either it's really funny right I think you could have the coolest parent in the world and it would still be like, no, I need to talk to somebody else. She doesn't get it. Yeah. And I, and after going through that as a parent myself, I, I I feel like I owe my parents an apology every single day of my life pretty much. So, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, this conversation took a Like, mom, oh my God, you're so embarrassing. Drop us off over there. Oh my God, look at the way you look. (laughs) So embarrassed. Yeah. So ashamed of how we acted. (laughs) Hopefully my mom won't act like that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> sure, I, I know, I know. Oh, I so you must have just been a baby I, when you had your babies. Like if they're tw- yeah. you're twenty, right? They're twenty one, nineteen. Wow. Yeah. I was my oldest daughter was uh born ten days before I turned nineteen. Oh wow. Yeah. So I I got five. So I still have I have a fourteen year old and a seven year old. You have a five? Are you five? Are they all from the same mom? Yeah. That's amazing. Oh, congratulations yeah. to you guys. Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, the, the, that's I, I, you know, I tell the older thing. I was like, you guys were a practice for the two that I like. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so they, they definitely, they definitely need positive mentors outside of my influence because yeah, I say do. stuff like that to them. Well, and also uh, <laughs> examples of real leadership. Like, you know, I won't make assumptions about what you think of our national leaders right now. Oh, I, I, I can tell you right now. He's awful. I, I can't yeah. stand him. I think, I think most of us would agree with that. If we're, you know, I think most reasonably minded people would not want Trump to be their kids inspiration in life mm, or influence. No. And so, so, so for me, it's also like for some of these kids where that is their only experience with a president of the United States, or this is their, Oh, only I didn't even think job. about that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's not like you and I, where we have the perspective of, well, God, at least we had Obama, or at least we had this person, or at least we, right. had, or at least we right. know what the general landscape is and the standards for someone in that role, even if we don't agree with them. Like to me, um, it's just, that's the best way I could say it is you, many of us are an influence to kids, whether we choose to be or not. So how are we going to influence them? So anyway, it's just a really, I, I feel so much gratitude about this role. It is not paying what I used to make in my regular jobs not even close right. Right now yet, but um, right. it's so rewarding. It's been so rewarding to to feel like you're making a difference in even the smallest part of the world. Right. Now, before before we go on, I, I just you you brought up uh, our lovely president, so I just wanted to ask you. I, I know uh, we do this sometimes, so you you don't have to do it. It's up to you. But usually at the end, I play a little game of who said it, Trump or Voldemort. Would you like <laughs> to play that game at the end? I've never seen the uh, movies, but I'd be happy to try that. All uh, right. There's also we either play that one or tr- or Trump or Peter Griffin. So it's up to you. Whatever one that you you, you want to try, you'd be uh, you'd be surprised how many people get all of them, uh, most of them wrong. Really? So okay. yeah. All right. So that's that's at the end. That's okay. so you, we. I, it's funny that you mentioned okay. about um like other jobs and stuff because I was I I wanted like what took you to. How did you get to teen, teen years? How did that become? And what did, what did you do before that? I mean, I, obobviously every every destination there's a there's yeah. a journey. Yeah, totally. That's so, 
because this is an amazing idea to me. So I, I'm like, I, I, you know, I, I can't express an, uh, enough just how uh, impressed I am with it. Um, so my professional background for the past 13 years before teen years had been in the film industry. I had worked with mm. everyone from Hollywood executives to political leaders. My last year of college, I moved to Los Angeles and I was interning at Sony. Then I got into mm. a management training program at Warner Brothers. So I had worked on some element of the studio side of the film industry for a while. And right. then um, my partner and I were traveling and we got pregnant with my little girl. She's now five and a half. When she was a baby, I remember when I was getting ready to go back to work because I stayed home for a couple of years. When I was getting ready to go back to work, I was like, you know, I can't, I can't just do what I've always done. I can't just have a cool job and make good money. And I really, New Mexico is in serious need of, there's so many things we could improve upon. You know, it's right. one of the most impoverished states in the country, which a lot of people don't know. It's always, I did not know that. Yeah, it's always right in line and being 50th in child welfare. Always like tied, wow. just about to be tied with Mississippi. And so there's a lot about, and there's also a huge income gap. There's plenty of money in New Mexico and there's, you know, there's people with money in New Mexico and there's a lot of people without money in New Mexico. Um, right. So anyway, my point is, <clears throat> I remember thinking when we moved back here so that Kaya could be brought up closer to family, I was like, man, I don't want her growing up the way that I did. I mean, she wouldn't right. anyway because her parents are, uh, you know, we just like had just or had more money than my parents did who had five of us. And then my dad died when I was young. So there's, there's many things that she already had an advantage on. But I just remember thinking, even if she has the best advantages, even if she goes to the best schools, even if nothing ever happens, I cannot now as a parent ignore so many things that need to be improved upon in New Mexico. And so I remember right. thinking the next work I do is going to be community oriented. Like I, I wasn't sure what that was going to be. I didn't know if I would like run for local office. I didn't know if I should mm-hmm. run a nonprofit. I didn't know what I would do. Anyway, ended up at this startup weekend for women. It was the first startup weekend for women in New Mexico. And everyone was pitching new app ideas. And I pitched the idea of, I would really like to see more of our youth working with elders. And I could think of a million ways they could do that. You know, from picking up their groceries, right. their lawn to, I had, you know, there's so many ideas I had. And I was like, but for the purposes of this startup weekend, which I didn't even know what that was at the time, I will hone that <laughs> in the tech savvy teens helping senior citizens learn technology. As you can imagine, it was the sexiest idea of the night. Um, <laughs> you know, there was like, I was so grateful that a few strangers wanted to team up with me on working on it on the, for the weekend right. and up in first place through this outstanding team. And then, uh, and then I ended up pursuing it, you know, all of those people at some point or another dropped off, you know, it was just, it's kind of an activity, I think for most people to do that. And I just right. ended up pursuing it because I kept getting re-inspired to pursue it. It was an unbelievable amount of work. That first year was so emotionally draining. Um, my daughter's okay. ended up splitting up about a year later. It's, it took a huge toll on my life, and it's also been extremely rewarding. Wow, I, I can never tell a story about anything about my life that that's a, that interesting. I'm like, uh, yeah, um, <laughs> you know. Um, so where, like, I'm actually, I would love for this to be in my area. So, all right, so how quickly can you get this out to the East Coast? Because this <laughs> you know is. What? I swear to God, I've been asked that question so many times. And after the 60 second doc, which was the, the most recent thing that sort of went national, like when right. we, I can't remember what piece of media three years ago when starting teen years came out and it had these women in Australia asking like, do you have teen years out here? We have a girls coding camp out here. They would love to become teen years. Like, so, so whenever we get some great piece of press, um, mm. that ends up happening where people are like, does this exist in Richmond? Does this exist in Portland, in Miami, et cetera. And I love that. And I'm like, I want it to exist there. I just, I haven't gotten it <laughs> yet. That would be right. right. Because this is, uh, not that I'm an authority on anything like this, but to me, this is something that not, not only deserves to go to, to spread, but I think is, I, I think you're, you're really honest. I think it's going to, I think eventually it's going to really start going. I mean, you're, you're spreading, you're growing now as it is. <laughs> I assume, right? Well, we're growing, but it's like, I mean, honestly, we started from like zero. So from, so yes. Right. And what I like to say is like my income increases every day. Our clientele increases every day because all that is true. It's just that, you know, right. it's really low. <laughs> so you have nowhere to go. <laughs> but yes, right. we're growing every day. So, yeah. all right. So, I mean, this so is, I, I, 
I looked on your on your website too. So you you also do like a little bit of uh, you started doing some some nonprofit stuff with this as well to help uh, uh, seniors who maybe can't afford uh, your services. That's absolutely right. So teen years started as an LLC, and to be honest with you, right. I kind of had I suspected in the beginning, knowing nothing about creating a nonprofit or a business, I suspected that it would probably fit under a nonprofit model better. But right. I couldn't get the original 20K investment from the business accelerator that invited me to apply unless we were a business. So Teen Years right. is an LLC. But I, I knew, certainly, and knew being in New Mexico, that there would be seniors who couldn't afford to pay that would want our services. And that, of course, was the case. So last year, we created a nonprofit arm to, um, so that we could get grant money, so that we could serve those seniors who can't afford to pay. So how, how difficult is that to, to run your you're running kind of running both a business and a nonprofit. Yeah. yeah yes. it's, it's a lot of work. I can tell you, um, because we're the nonprofit arm is a fiscal sponsor. They are doing mm-hmm. the, like the bookkeeping for the most part. I am doing the applications for the grants with their help. And also the, the work that you do in order to get the grant money. So I would say, it's like running a very, very small business and running a very, very right. small nonprofit. It could grow bigger, but because I don't have the bandwidth and the, you know, the time, basically what I know happens is just things fall, like opportunities fall through the cracks. Like I'll get an email mm-hmm. that I won't see until two weeks later. And I'm like, Oh damn, we would have been perfect for that grant or, Oh damn, right. we didn't see that. And now that client's pissed because you know, two days ago, it's been two days and we haven't called her back. Whatever it is, it, um, we recently just got a ten thousand dollar award from Comcast, and I'm really excited about that because that is allowing me to hire a part time admin assistant for the next year. All right. And so that was the interview I just finished before you and I got on the got on the oh. phone. Oh, okay. So that's uh, so that's from Comcast, yeah. which is good because. Uh, Plenty of people who have Comcast, oh, yeah. you know, always need assistance. Trust me, I know. Totally. And we've got <laughs> two big Comcast this year. I don't know if you saw this, Lou, on our website, but this May, this May that just passed in 2018, we partnered with them. They actually reached out to us. Yes, I did. Comcast New Mexico reached out to us. So cool. Really? Because they heard about what we were doing for seniors in New Mexico, and they said, we want to get more seniors in New Mexico online. What can you do with a $25,000 grant? And we're like, oh. Wow. We like 45 workshops serving like 12 people a piece and all over Albuquerque and Santa Fe. So that was our first kind of right. growth, little growth spurt. So we are in the middle of that contract now. And then a completely different arm of Comcast, because he's, you know, Comcast mm. is ginormous, completely different arm yeah. in the pitch competition uh, with the New Mexico Technology Council a few weeks ago. Teen years applied. We were one of 50 startups in New Mexico. We were one of five that got to compete out of 50 that applied. And then we ended up winning. So that 10000 is what's going to go to paying for this new admin assistant. So I'm really excited. Wow. What kinds of wins? That's, yeah, that's amazing. That, so that, wow. I'm like, I, I feel good for you because this is, there's so much um, awful stuff that you hear every day. <laughs> you know, like social media, you look at every, you know, every day presidents call somebody a horse face. It's just, every day's a disaster. And it's, and then like, right. So then like, <laughs> I'm sorry, but it just is like, it's just, everything's awful. The whole world is, is gone to shit. It's a disaster. And, um, you know, and I then, see, and like, it's nice when we hear these good stories about good Yeah. Things. And then I see this 60 second doc, uh, which I love. I love those things. And, um, did you reach out to them? Did they reach out to you? How did they find you? And how, how did that, That's why and how did that grow? It's things like that, Lou, which have kept me going because it is such an enormous amount of work, right. especially in the beginning, because before anyone's ever heard about you, before anyone believes in anything you're doing, it is right. just you. And it's so hard and you're not making any money and nobody supports you. And so like, I've been so grateful for this continued great press that we've gotten since day one. Right. Um, They always reach out to us. I can only think of like four times in the last three and a half years and starting teen years that we've actually done press releases. And when we've done those, it's just been locally like, Hey, Albuquerque journal, which is the local daily newspaper. You know, we, we teen years, we got this award or this happened or that happened. 
and they've written on us, but, but it's so cool. Uh, 60 second docs, them too, they reached out to us. And what was also cool is because I've been so busy when they first reached out, I was like, Oh, that's awesome. Yes. I would love to take part. And they're like, okay, can you just answer these questions for us? Do you think I got back to that email in a reasonable time frame? Like three months later, they followed up with me and they were like, Trish, we were just wondering if you're still interested. And I'm like, yes, I am. Thank you so much. <laughs> Let me answer oh, these wow. questions. So, so it was really great because they followed up with me. They made it happen. Yeah. That's awesome. And it was funny because I don't, I, I love that you love the video because when I see it, I'm like, Oh God, look at the, you know, look the way I look. And it's partly because <laughs> the filmmaker, the filmmaker was like, like, you know, he was, as you can imagine, he was shadowing me all day, interviewing me for far longer than 60 seconds. And at one point, right. he said, if you could smile a little bit more, if you could just smile a little bit more. And as a woman, <laughs> and this day and age with the whole Me Too movement, I think like when you hear something like that, you're just like, really? You just like, see, no, yeah. really? <laughs> so I was, it was like the last thing I was going to do was smile. <laughs> Even though I'm like a natural <laughs> person, I was just like, no, right. smile. I mean, this is a very serious thing I'm talking about. Anyway, as I saw the video, I was like, oh, Jesus, why didn't I smile? <laughs> I look so depressed. And because it happens to be the teenagers he happened to get on camera that day are like not smiling at all. And then they're being pulled right. around by a camera, which is unusual. You know, they're not smiling. So it's just like the whole thing for me. I'm like, Oh, I wish that video. Forget everybody it. Everybody looks miserable. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So I it, love it was love great because everybody is really happy actually at teenagers, but for some reason, <laughs> I not express that. I'm glad that you loved it. Anyway, yeah, it, was, it was great. How long did that? Uh, so if, how long did they film you? They filmed you've, a, a whole day yeah he basically came First. out in the morning went with us to this uh more like we, so teenagers works in two ways private individual yeah. sessions where say like lou's mom calls us and say hi lou got me a brand new ipad for christmas i have no idea what the hell to do with it and we say okay great oh, oh that mm-hmm. actually might happen for real <laughs> <laughs> and we say do you okay miss capetta do you want to come to our office for a private one-on-one coaching or mm. would you like for ten dollars more would you like us to come to your home and then we use an over 18 year old teenager So she makes that choice. That's an individual session. And then there's group events, like a senior living community will contact us and say, you know, we got like 10, 15 people asking us questions. They all have different devices. What can you do? We'll bring six or seven teeners. We'll do a one hour personal coaching session with each of them. And then, yeah, so that's the group event. What was I answering? You asked me a question. That's why I went into that. Um. Anyway, that's how like how long they were they were filming. I almost forgot. I'm like so into it. I'm like, I'm just thinking about like my mom using an iPad. I'm like, oh god. <laughs> you asked how long the filmmaker was here, so he yes. came in the morning went to one of those group events and then um, met me at our next group event in the afternoon, and mm. then um, went came to my offices downtown and did an interview with me, which probably lasted a couple of hours. So we got hours and hours of footage to make right. that sixty second doc. Wow, that's uh, it's funny that you that you uh, used my mom as an example because I am going to tell you this, and I, I'm just thinking about this now. So, um, let, let my uh, my grandmother passed last year. My mom was uh, taking care of my grandmother. She had moved in her house and stuff like that. Uh, the last few years, um, my mom had not had a cell phone. I, I don't know why. I was like, ma, like. Seriously, like even the Taliban living in caves, they have cell phones and YouTube access. Like it's time to get with it. Not even a flip phone? No, nothing. I don't need it. So I was just like, all right, well. But then when uh, my grandma got sick, my mom needed help and stuff like that. So I would go and help her. And um, I said, listen, um, if something happens to grandma, you got to be reached. You got to get a cell phone. I said, "I'll, I'll put it on my plan. So by this time, there were... No flip phones. I got her like the most basic smartphone. That thing was basically a paperweight for about six months. And then she, I mean, she was literally in, intimidated by it. And it's, it's, I think it's something that we take for granted. And, and it, it was a, you know, in that situation, I mean, we, I think that the, the point I'm trying to make is that it's not just a, um, like technology is a necessity in this day and age. And it can be a matter of, a, a, of life and death for some people, depending on what you're trying to use. Like, well, my mom didn't even know how to make a phone call with that phone. She eventually learned. Now she learned how to text lucky me. And, uh, you know, but it took her a while. I mean, it took her a real while and it was very, very, uh, she was very intimidated by it. And by the way, people forget 
what it's like to learn something new. You and I at least have some frame of reference. We didn't grow up with cell phones in our hands at eight years old, the way these kids are nowadays. Right. But we at least, you know, it came around when we were at college age, I would say like when we were in our early twenties, yep. you know, that's when I got my first cell phone, like those big. Yep, me too. And so we at least had a frame of reference. We got to go from like pagers to those crappy <laughs> cell phones to those right. things where it was like a, a, a to text somebody. And then we like graduated to what are the now smartphones. The right. older adults who are just looking at a phone for the first time. Can you imagine how intimidating to look at an iPhone for the first time with all those freaking yeah. apps on it and they don't even know what an app is. So what I'm always telling the kids is, and a lot of them know this because the, the kids self select really well there. We get a lot of applicants and there's so few that aren't a fit. And that is because these kids know what they're getting into. Like there's no bullshit. Right. What you see is what you get. If you want to become a teen, all you have to do is look at our website and see the pictures of teens working with seniors and you see what you're going to get into. And so these kids will come say, you know, I, I'm, I'm really good at this. I, I teach right. my grandpa stuff all the time, et cetera. Anyway, I'm always telling them, don't forget, they're not just asking for help for them. This is an, a, a very emotionally vulnerable thing to do. It's like me trying to learn quantum physics, which I know nothing about. Right. And so if you're just like, see, you know, see, see, it's intuitive. It's obvious. No, nothing about this is obvious. And now I'm embarrassed to ask you my question for the fourth time because I don't want you to think I'm stupid. So it's like, a, right. I'm always trying to like in the orientation, I'll explain like if you can imagine what it's like to learn something that you zero comfort level with the best thing we can get is those seniors who are like, no, I still don't get it. Now explain it again, find a new way. Cause what you're doing isn't working. Like that would be awesome. Right, but, right. Then most seniors aren't going to do that. They'll just like you and I, if someone's tutoring us and we're not really getting it, we might be like, yeah, yeah. Kind of, kind of. Yeah. Yeah. And then try to figure it out. Yeah. And then really they're just, telling you that because they're embarrassed to ask again and again, and they'll take it on or we'll never see them again. I'm really proud of the fact that teeners has almost a 50% repeat business rate. People call us when they get new devices two years later. Um, Wow. Yeah. It's really cool. And, and like I said, these teeners self select really well, so they don't have to even like, I don't really even have to train them that much because they, they know like, I like all I say is you be patient. You, you don't touch the buttons, let them touch the buttons. You point and direct. The whole goal is to empower them. We are not geek squad where we come fix your problem. And then it's like, okay, later, like our goal is to empower them to learn. Okay. Now, (laughs) yeah. Now here is another very interesting thing. Teens and seniors. Um, They are, Probably the you know more marginalized on on either end of the age yeah. spectrum in society, and you would think one would think you know off the just hearing that 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 could be something that clashes teens and seniors. Did you find any of that? Because it doesn't seem it seems to that they actually have find that they have a lot more in common with each other than maybe they thought. Is that? I, you know what it, sometimes they find they have a lot more in common. I used to, I, that's what I used to say in the beginning. Like, you know, we, we, as human, like there's so much, I, okay, let me start that. And I'll edit that. Let me start. Over. <laughs> yes. They find that they have a lot in common, but you know what? I think what they find as well is that they develop a really significant appreciation for each other's differences. Like hmm. I think, you know, a woman describing like just anything like uh, there was this woman that was 81 and she was just crying because she finally got to FaceTime with her kid or her grandkid oh, wow. in Minnesota. And it was so amazing to see. And I think the teen year was like, you know, that's not an experience that he knows. He doesn't right. know the love of having a child or the love of having a grandchild and, and, or the power of using FaceTime for the first time in that way that she knew it after 81 years of living. Right. So, so I think it's, yes, they do, They discover, of course, through human connection that we're all human and we all have just many things in common, but they also develop an appreciation for differences that they might not have otherwise. Has, has this whole experience for you, have you been surprised um, just how much of a um, impact it's having on people? Are you not the, so much 
surprised, but maybe uh, pleasantly surprised. Do you know what I mean? Yes. May I give you a quick story? Absolutely, please. That's <laughs> okay. a, I mean, otherwise, otherwise, I have no show. So please. Give me a, <laughs> okay. please yes, is the, it's like a resounding yes to answer your question. I've been mm-hmm. absolutely amazed at the impact because I knew, because the idea was inspired by my own mom, I knew right. that it would have an impact on the seniors in that it would help them learn technology. I had no idea the emotional impact it could have on both of them or the life impact it could have on both of them. For example, two things come to mind. Uh, parents of one of my teen years, Eli, this was about two years ago. They kept calling, kept calling, wanted me to have lunch with them, finally had lunch with them. And they said, you know, we just wanted to let you know the impact this has had on Eli's life. This is a kid who at 16 had zero friends. I mean, zero friends. His only friends were the online gaming community, which he was constantly on when he wasn't doing homework. And, and he, was, he was very socially awkward. I remember this from when I interviewed him. But I also knew that I could just tell he was brilliant and he would be a great coach. Mm. So they said six months of working with teen years, six months. And by the way, Lou, this is not like McDonald's. You're not working 20 hours a week. You're working maybe several hours a month, maybe. Right, right. Um, okay. But you get that instant gratification because when the seniors get it, they're like, oh! Oh my God, thank you so much. What would I have done without you? Oh my God, now I understand. You know, so you get that instant gratification. Anyway, they were saying, so this was Eli, six months into working with teen years. He is starting conversations with people in elevators, with strangers. He's applying to colleges he didn't think he could get into. He's applying. It's, it's amazing the impact this has had on his, his self-confidence, his self-esteem, his life. Right. He's now, Eli's now uh, at USC in L.A., Okay. Um, and I was, I was just so moved by that. And they wanted to make a donation, a significant donation to teeners, which was just so, it was so moving. Um, and then like another great story that I love sharing because, because remember when you start something from scratch and it's just you and the toll that it takes in so many ways, um, it's hard to describe the importance of what these stories mean to you and how they can keep right. you going when you're not paying yourself or when you're not, you know what I mean? Well, because you wonder, I'm sure you go through a period where you may wonder is, is this worth the sacrifice? Absolutely. Is right. this worth the sacrifice? And it's, and it's a validation. Absolutely. It's, it's a validation. And, and it's, it's so cool because, you know, people have ideas all the time. I'm sure you and I could come up with a cool idea of how we could fix the homeless problem in Jersey, but yeah. The other to actually take that idea and try and execute it to actually have so many people love our idea to actually have support from the community where people are willing to donate money or whatever it's just so it's such a cool feeling and it's such a cool thing to see the community it's it, so it ends up being like this com- community enterprise as opposed to some big ass corporation that is just all about money right. so anyway what the other story i was going to tell you which helped keep me going in the beginning a few months after starting teen years we did a free event at this senior center in albuquerque so we had like seven, eight teen years there, all working one-on-one with the older adults in the room. So I was going up to each of them afterwards and saying, you know, hi, Miss So-and-so, can you tell me what we could do better? I'm doing a little survey. I want to get your feedback. We're just starting teen years. And this woman just starts bawling. She's just crying. And she was like, she said, for someone who is alone, who has no young people in their lives, you all have given me hope. You welcomed me the moment I walked in. You didn't make me feel stupid or condescended to. I hope you realize the impact of what you're doing here for people like me. And she was just crying. And I started crying. And her teen year, (laughs) this was Katie's first ever coaching session. She was just volunteering that day because we were short on people. Right. And this woman, what she'd wanted was to get her boarding passes online. Oh, wow. learn her to do boarding passes online to visit like her sister in Minnesota or whatever, you know, whatever it was. I can't remember where it was. Um, anyway, all of us were crying and there was two news crews there filming. Oh. None, of them, none of them caught this though. Oh. I just, it was the most moving thing I had. I just couldn't even imagine. I, I could imagine it once you said it and I was like so blown away. So anyway, that kept me going because that was one of those moments where I was like, Oh my God, why am I doing this? Taking about my whole life. It's, you know, like Uh, going apart, like there's just, there was so much hard. And so that kept me going. And, and I was, and I always tell women, like if I speak on a panel or something like about starting a business or entrepreneurship, I'm like, Mm -hmm. I don't know. I have to tell you it, it goes from 
I am, I am, can't believe I'm doing this. Now I'm going to go get another, I'm going to go get a real job where I have benefits, where I can actually contribute to the world, <laughs> where I like have to make enough money to, you know what I mean? Yeah. And where I don't have the stress of whatever. That happens. And then it's like a few days later or a week later, some huge win happens. Then you're like, okay, I'm re inspired all over again. Right. It's really, wow. like, it's an interesting. Wow. So that's, that's, uh, uh that's interesting that uh, you have such a huge impact on so many people. And in turn, their experience to have such a huge impact on you continuing your, yeah. your journey. Yeah. That's, uh, yeah, right. Yeah, that's how, that's how society's supposed to work. Like, exactly. You know, it's not just the teens that, that love working, do, doing this work and that get inspired by doing it. And what I love is they get recognition through all this great press. And right. it's not just the seniors that are getting help with their electronics and then also, inspired and get to learn more it's me it's like every it's it's really been an impressive thing that we're doing i think that's also i I have to be honest with you like this whole thing it makes me want to move to new mexico (laughs) (laughs) like for real it's uh not to mention i'm over the winners too what what is where are you in philly no no i'm in uh i'm in well I'm, I moved. This is how expensive New Jersey got. I grew up in New Jersey, if you couldn't tell by my yeah. accent. Um, and uh, I, now I live in Pennsylvania, just on, on the other side of the river because it's Wait, I'm so sorry. much It cheaper. broke up. Now you live where? In Pennsylvania, just on the other side of the river, like by, um, I don't know if you're familiar with Easton, Allentown. No. No. All right. Well, so what's the city you live in? The town? The, the the town I live in is uh, Nazareth, Pennsylvania. Nazareth, ooh, that's a cool name. Eh. Is it a cool town? I mean, it, nah, it's uh, <laughs> it's <laughs> nah, it, nah, it's all right. You know, I I grew up in New Jersey, out right at like I mean, maybe five miles from New York City. So it's a big it's a, it's a big it's difference. Cool. I still work out that way. My union is out that way, so. I oh, commute, we had to move but, to Nazareth because yeah. it was more affordable to live. Yeah, I buy a lot. I mean, New Jersey is it just it, – there's a lot of uh, – like you were talking about in New Mexico, a lot of big money and a lot of people that can't afford to live there. Yeah. You know, it's 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 uh, it's crazy. It's – and, it you know, it stinks. I mean, it, it, where I live now is, is nice. My kids, uh, they grew up out here. You know, it's a nice area and stuff. But there was just something – you know, I, I liked, I really liked where I grew up, you know, uh, being, you know, from the New York city metro area. I always thought, I thought it was cool. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's so much there. It's like, you feel like sometimes you're the center of the universe uh, to the point where like you take so much stuff for granted. Like we had school field trips to the Statue of Liberty. And then like, you see a Statue of Liberty twice. You're just like, ah, I'm not going this year. You, yeah. you know, like <laughs> yeah, totally. then, then my, my kids, uh, they're like, you went to the Statue to a liberty when you were a kid i'm like uh yeah it wasn't that big a deal oh right because they're growing up in nazareth <laughs> right they, yeah they don't i'll tell you a funny story so my my oldest daughter uh played uh, good basketball players played some college ball she played basketball growing up that was our thing together so when she was 14 i took her to a, a knicks game went to new york city it was her birthday i said i'll take you anywhere you want to eat now new york city is full of really great restaurants she wanted she wanted to have a hot dog from a street vendor. She was so amazed that you could buy a hot dog on a street corner Aww. that that I was like, really? Like you want it? It was amazing. I was like, all right, yeah. So cool. And, yeah, oh my was, god, that's so cool. Isn't that funny? Because it's like, how far are you from New York now? Uh, about uh, about an hour and a half. Isn't that funny? Because like in the grand scheme, scheme of the world, that's nothing. And yeah, it's not far. Me, when I was in LA, I was mentoring a girl at mm. Warner Brothers. Like, like I was working at Warner Brothers. I was mentoring a girl that lived, you know, in the Valley, but she wasn't that right. far. She was in Burbank and it was like maybe on a good day with no traffic, 30 minutes mm-hmm. maybe to the beach. But she was 16 and no one in her family had ever been seen the ocean before. And I was like, like I couldn't believe it because growing up in New Mexico, God, how cool! We were freaking. You'll we'll fly, you know, to California to go. Like it was just amazing to me. So right. so so just to your point, the things we take for granted, and and also like, yeah, like 
you know, here she is growing up that close and has never had a hot dog from a street vendor. That's just cool. Yeah. Now, New Mexico, obviously, I'm sure you get a lot of like breaking bad questions and stuff, right? When people. So, well, <laughs> Are I, you a fan I, of the show? I, I, got, I love the show. And that, I'm, and I'm like, I feel so funny saying this on your podcast because. I've never, I didn't watch the Breaking Bad series. And the reason <laughs> I didn't is because I'm not really like a person that's into TV. Like to me, it's right. such a commitment to watch it. And then I got to wait till next it week is. to find out what happened. So my brothers, everybody in the freaking world was into Breaking Bad. But I was partly not living here while they were being, while they were producing it. And then when I was living here, when they were producing it, I was actually uh, working at the New Mexico film office, running independent filmmakers programs for the state. And I was doing their radio show at the time. I was doing what you do right now on the radio show. Right, right. And interviewed Brian Cranston on the radio. And I just remember being like, let's talk about anything but Breaking Bad because I really don't know. But but it, we were actually, we weren't doing a show for that purpose anyway. It was to talk about some charity work he was doing. Right. But I just remember being like, you know, I kind of like, I'm like, I like that I'm the only person probably in the world that's not asking him about Breaking Bad. Right. Um, anyway, yes, I, I have heard it's a fantastic show. I've heard it's really, really good. My brothers loved it. My brother got me the season one of it. And I, but that was after I had Kaya, my little girl, and mm-hmm. certainly haven't watched any TV shows since then. Yeah. It's, one day. It's like one of those things on the list. Yeah. It's, uh, it Were you going to ask something about it, though? Because I probably know if, if your questions... Well, I was just going to say, because, you know, being from New Jersey, the uh, I'm sure you've heard of The Sopranos. The, yeah. Right? The, oh, yeah. So, so, right. People are asking about so that. So uh, like, and, you know, it was filmed all over New Jersey. So, like, uh, people from New Jersey, are, you know, you point out what you know and stuff like that. And you're like, oh, I've been there. And it's like, if you're from, like, everybody from New Jersey watched The Sopranos. It's, it's, uh, that's what I was... What's that? Were you so in love with that show when it was? I yeah, I did. I did like it. I, I liked it a lot. Um, and it, but it is there's the. It's funny when you see stuff that you know or see, yeah. you know, like the, the certain types of uh, people. I mean, I, I'm an Italian guy too, so my whole family, like some of the, like some of like the family get together scenes and stuff like that. I'm yeah. like, oh man, my, my mm-hmm. family, not the mob stuff, but you know, like the. Yeah. The family oh, stuff. Does your, spa- so. does your family speak Italian? Uh, my grandma did speak Italian. She did. Okay. Um, you don't speak it. I don't. I took. I took it in high school, um, and I used to be able to speak it. I could still understand some stuff, but uh, my parents don't speak it. Yeah. My grandmother spoke it a little bit. Her parents, um, which obviously I never met, but like my my dad's grandparents they didn't speak english at all so yeah. she had to she had to speak it uh to them in italian and then when they passed she stopped using it so yeah my my uh my dad came from his parents were mexican and only spoke mm-hmm. my mom's parents were migrated from italy and spoke italian but neither well my dad spoke spanish fluently but he died when we were so young so mm-hmm. we like understood a lot of it but it was mostly him yelling at us <laughs> and then never learned Italian because the way they grew up, you know, she was born in 1939. Her grand, my grandfather, the Italian grandfather was a, mm. a tailor at Bloomingdale's in LA, which oh, wow. is, which is an unheard of job for an Italian immigrant to get. So right. they were very big on him not having an accent, him not, you know, because this was during the war. So, right. so anyway, my mom was, would always talk about how like they were not to have an accent. They were not going to learn it. It was just, you had to be as American as you could be. Wow. That's great. I actually, uh, I'm, uh, there's a podcast I listen to. I've been on their show actually, and they've been on mine They're called the vocal fries. They have a podcast. Uh, their linguists have a podcast about linguistic discrimination. And one of them, one of the hosts, uh, her name is Megan Figueroa. Her father, uh, was Mexican and he was very, he was hell bent on her, not, being bilingual he thought he wanted her just to speak english and to to this day i mean she she wishes she knew spanish but she never knew any spanish and he made it a point because of discrimination like that and uh wow that's uh that's that's a different world now like now it's cool to be bilingual back then it wasn't right that's crazy and that's really not even that long ago i know this was just a generation like this is like our parents right 
and now we're and well, we're probably going to be going back anyway with the way things are going. With no, I don't think so. <laughs> no, I, mean, I was just it was kind of a bad joke about my buddy Trump. Which oh, by the way, uh, just so you know, I'm uh, blocked on Twitter by by Scott Bayo. Are you really? Oh, I saw that yeah. on your Twitter thing. Why? Yeah. Uh, because I created I created the Scott Bayo Hall of Fame, which is basically like guests get to nominate. Uh, somebody to be in the Scott Bale hall of fame is basically a hall of fame for like the world's biggest douchebags. Yeah. Like the so, Trumpers kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Like like, yeah. So yeah. So um, then he blocked you? Well, I, I reached out to him cause I wanted to do like a episode where we give out like awards and I asked if he would, you know, be a, like a, a presenter. I thought maybe he'd laugh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> he'd laugh. I didn't think it was too funny. Yeah. Uh, whatever. <laughs> I mean, you know, so I mean, I loved Charles in charge when I was a kid, but whatever. I mean, I, yeah, I, I, can, I can live with, yeah, I can live without, I can live without Scott Bay. I can live without well. Scott Bay in my life. Right. Totally. You can. So, okay. So, um, we've, we've, we've touched on the very important stuff. Now, would you like to play, uh, yes, you know, who said it? Trump or Voldemort? Game? Yeah, you want to do Trump or Voldemort or Trump yeah. or Peter Griffin? I don't know who Peter Griffin is. From Family Guy. Wow, you really do work a lot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yes. I've seen Family Guy. I didn't know that. But I haven't seen, like, if you told me Simpsons, I know every Simpsons reference. Oh, I've never yeah, seen Family Guy. Simpsons. So, okay, okay. Versus I, Voldemort. That's, I haven't okay. seen Harry Potter, but that's closer. <clears throat> so, you're right. All right. Let's, <laughs> I'm going to. There, there's 10... Uh, there's 10 ones here. I'm going to keep score. So far, no guest has gotten more than 50%. It's all been 50-50. So. I will. Okay. I'm going to be that guest who gets 75. <laughs> okay, here we go. Well, that uh, you either have to get 70 or 80 because uh, there's only 10 questions, but whatever. <laughs> yeah. Okay, here we go. First, first one. Okay. Torture works. Believe me, it works. Trump for sure. Very good. I can't believe anybody would get that wrong. Everyone's gotten that right one right. Yeah, the first two are pretty easy. Okay, go ahead. Okay, two. I've always been able to charm the people I needed. Trump. No, that's <gasps> Voldemort. Okay. I've always been able to charm the people I needed? Yes. Okay. I didn't even okay. think about that. For some reason, I just assumed Trump. Okay, so I'm going to think now. Now I'm now okay. I'm my opinion. <laughs> okay, good. What separates winners from losers is how a person reacts to each new twist of fate. Voldemort. Wrong. Trump. Really? <laughs> that sounds way too like. Uh, yeah. Right. Because the, the, the words "twist of fate" make it sound like. Yeah. Exactly. I was like, "There's no way Trump knows how to say twist of fate, much less." <laughs> Okay, what separate, say that one again, though, so that See, you know. It's a lot harder than you thought, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> what separates winners from losers? I guess Voldemort wouldn't be like winners from losers. Right. Winners from losers is what? Their reaction to a twist of fate? Is how a person reacts to each new twist of fate. I can't <clears throat> believe you said that. Good job okay. with this. <laughs> All right. The concept of shaking hands is absolutely terrible. Say that again. The concept of shaking hands is absolutely terrible. I want to say Trump. <laughs> uh, is that your is that your final no, answer? It's Voldemort. <laughs> oh, you should have went with Trump. I thought it was it Trump, but Trump. I was like, no, he's trying to trick me. This is. <laughs> I think it's Trump, but it was Voldemort. No, wait, yeah, it, Trump? It, it, it was Trump. Dang it! I thought it was Trump. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Go ahead. Is there okay. any questions? Are there? Uh, there's 10. This is, we're on number five. So. Okay. I'm going to get the rest right. Uh, so you're, uh, yeah, you're going to have to. <laughs> All right. I'm, I'm going to sit here and watch you die. Take <laughs> your time. I'm in no hurry. Okay. Oh, I thought mm-hmm. you were making fun of my like gaming skills. The quote. Oh, is, no, no, no. I'm like, no, no, yeah. in no hurry. Who, who, or what was it? Say that. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm, what was I'm it? going to sit. <laughs> All right. I'm going to sit, here, I'm and going to sit hurry. here and watch you die. Take your time. I'm in no hurry. That seems like it would be Voldemort. 
Very good. Okay, good. Okay, number six. Sometimes by losing a battle, you find a new way to win a war. Voldemort. Wrong. I can't even believe Trump would have that in him to say that. <laughs> Sometimes by losing a battle, what? Sometimes by losing a battle, you find a new way to win the war. I guess I could see him saying something like that, like in his book, The Art of the Deal book or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It sounds okay. like something he kind of half copied from, you know, like half plagiarized from someone else. Right. Yeah. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. Number seven. There is no good and evil. There is only power and those too weak to seek it. Voldemort. Yes. Okay. Eight. Ha! Spoken like a true politician. It's ha. Spoken like a true. Yes. Ha! <laughs> this is so unfair that I haven't seen the Harry Potter movies. Let me think. I, to be honest with you, I haven't seen the Harry Potter movies either, and I I didn't do well on this. But the, oh. the fact that it's just like you're just like, ah oh, man, you really have to sit there and think with some of these. Like yeah. each one of these, you can really see that idiot saying it. An yeah, idiot, totally. I mean, Trump. Wait, can you say it again? Ha, spoken what? like a true politician. Ha. Spoken like a true politician. I used my acting chops there as well. <laughs> I think that's Voldemort. Yes, that is Voldemort. Okay, that is. Well, you're four for you're four and four, so you get okay. these two right. I might break the record. Yep. So here we go. It's very important that people aspire to be successful. The only way you can do it is if you look at somebody who is. Donald Trump. Yes, it is. Oh, it all comes down to this. Number 10. Are you going to, uh, are you going to, you going to do it? You're going to break the record. You're going to get this one right. Yes. No pressure. (laughs) Okay. I can make bad things happen to people who annoy me. I can make them hurt if I want to. Trump. No. <laughs> that seems like because they're such simple words. It seems so. That doesn't sound like. It's that doesn't Voldemort. sound like J.K. Rowling's words. <laughs> but okay, if you say that, some. That's so. Then I'm at least tied with the person who's done best. Yeah, it's there's so there's been three uh, three times we did this and nobody gets better than 50 percent. it's uh harder than you thought isn't it yeah totally where did Which you come up with that sad. did you like find that online uh, yeah i found that online it's on playbuzz.com oh don't tell just kidding i don't i'm like now people are gonna know they're gonna google it and then when they, when they go on your show all oh, right forget it anyway. i'm gonna switch i'm gonna switch it up after a little while you yeah know what I mean? totally. Start doing <laughs> okay well i mean hey you did good um that was uh that was impressive. You almost pulled off the record breaking uh Thanks. Almost um, you next time with your next one. Right. Um I still can't see you. It's still a frozen image of you on the screen, so I'm just like oh. Okay. I can still see you. Yeah. Um but uh I gotta thank you again for coming on. I know you had a long day there, you're busy and um I appreciate it. You've inspired uh lots of people, including myself. I, I uh I'm really uh I'm really, really um excited to talk to you and I'm I'm glad that I did. Uh what you're doing is great work. So when you, you know, feel discouraged or whatever, try to keep that in mind. It's really, really great work. I hope that you expand everywhere. And um, you know, when I uh if I ever get out to New Mexico, I'm I'm bring I'm bringing a shirt on my show, and I'm gonna get a teenier shirt. Totally, totally. I'll take <laughs> one of our fine breweries out here. You'll have a blast. Oh yeah, that'd be uh, that'd be awesome. Uh, again, thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, Lou, for having me on. I really appreciate it. Thank you, everyone, for listening. What's up, everybody? It's your boy Lou Capetta. Thanks again for checking out my show. You can find the show anywhere you find your podcast, including Spotify. And wherever you do listen, 
please leave a review, leave a rating. All that stuff helps us get noticed on whatever platform you're listening on. And if you really like the show, head over to Twitter or Instagram and follow us at Luca Show. Thanks again for checking us out. Peace.